What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with immersive engineering. Now the day has finally come on pump because today we are setting up the actual diesel generator. Now some of you might be saying like what you've been setting it up for like four episodes now. That's actually not true. I consider all of this stuff that we've done in this room so far just to be prep work because all it is doing is actually getting us what we're going to burn in the diesel generator, which of course is biodiesel. So although it might seem a little discouraging to say we just spent like four episodes not actually even setting this up yet, um, you know, it's, it's going to pay off. So don't worry. Uh, so we're going to put it right over here in this corner and it's going to be a three by five and it's, it's mostly three tall, except where you have the input and output, which is just going to be one side. And that is only too tall. It's going to use a decent amount of steel. And when I say decent, that's a blatant lie. I'm lying to your face right now. It takes so much steel. Now think about the steel that we used for like the excavator. It takes even more than that. I'm almost positive. So if we look at the blocks I have in my inventory right now, uh, it's actually going to take six generator blocks, nine radiator blocks, and 27 heavy engineering blocks. Luckily for me, our last build left us with one heavy engineering block left over. So we only had to make 13 sets instead of 14, save 12 steel, which is awesome. But that's not that much in the long run considering all of these blocks take steel. Unlike normal where just the heavy engineering blocks would take steel, the generator and radiator blocks also take steel. So uh, it was roughly three and a half to four stacks and I spent a ton of time just sitting, waiting for the uh, blast furnace to cook iron down into steel. And then I kept going back to the coke oven and I used the chemical thrower to just burn through creosote to open up space and just, it was, it was not fun. It was a couple hours of just atrocious work. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we can automate that a little bit better soon. But I need to stop rambling and we need to get building on this thing. So first off, we're going to do the usual, taking a look at the engineering manual. So one thing that I've been asked is how to get to these. So instead of just jumping in and looking right at the page that we need, I'm going to go through all the different ways to actually get to that page. So first way, easiest way, go to power wires and generators, click diesel generator, gets you to the page. If you want to be like a total hipster like I am, you go to heavy machinery, biodiesel, and then you click on one of these two that link you to the diesel generator page. I don't know why there's two and it's not just one, but you can click either. They bring you to the same place. And now we are here. We are at the glorious diesel generator page, which essentially says that, you know, if you're a cool kid and you want to get a bunch of power with this power or with this mod, I should say, uh, you're going to be using the diesel generator. It's the best way in this mod to get power and you burn biodiesel, all that good stuff. Uh, and it says right here and this keep this in mind um, due to its high output it will work through fuel very quickly so make sure you have a sufficient fuel production to run it that is an understatement okay you need one bucket of biodiesel every 6.25 seconds to uh, keep it running consistently uh, with 4096 rf per tick so just, just remember that we'll talk about that a little bit later but right here is the structure it's essentially just a massive block you can see like i said that it's three high except for this portion right here with these generator blocks and that is going to be where the actual input and output is so you can make it like this and uh, it's pretty simple to do you're going to do one side is just going to be uh, a three by three a uh, vertical three by three i should say of these radiator blocks and then you're going to make a three by three by three of these heavy engineering blocks and i can just see the steel just melting away before my eyes right now it's so oh it's atrocious oh my gosh okay so we got that and then we have the generator blocks now i have these like i'm setting this up with how i want it to go in mind so i know that i want the input and output to be right over here so like i said whatever side these are on is going to be the input and the output so if you want to save yourself a bunch of time, you might want to do a little bit of planning beforehand so that you know how to set it up so that when you come over here, you're going to right click on this block right here and it's going to form it. So now everything is set up correctly for me. I don't need to go back through and rotate it at all or do anything like that um, because I did pre-planning guys. That's the key. That's the key. So there's a couple things we got to cover with this before we actually start hooking things up to it. So right here is going to be the redstone input and output signal, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be how you're going to turn it on and off. So just going to throw a lever on that. So this will be on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Yeah. So now you know how to do that. You guys know how to use the lever. That's that's great. You guys just learned a lot right there. Um, right here is the input for fluid. You can also do the same thing on this side. It's pretty much mirrored. Uh, I don't actually know if you need to use both of them eventually to get you know enough going in there. I think you could probably get away with just going in one side. Uh, what might be the issue is that you can't actually pump fluid in there fast enough. Might just be a convenience thing. I guess we'll see in the long run, but you can put fluids in here and here. 
then you can actually pull the power out right up here. Unlike other machines, this one is actually going to have three outputs for power, and it's actually relatively nice. We're gonna be using the high voltage cable, so I'm not super worried about it, but if you were using lower voltage cable and you didn't wanna just pull it out of one portion of that, uh, it will evenly split among as many as you have connected, obviously the max being three, but if you did like two medium voltage connected here and here, it would take the 4096, it would divide it by two and it would send it out there. Obviously that's not gonna be sending it quick enough if you're using medium voltage, but you know, that's just, it's just obviously like that's what it is. So if you hook up more, it will divide it evenly among whatever is connected. So first things first, we actually need to be getting the biodiesel from the refinery to this. And that is what this is for right here. So now you can start pretending like this is here because obviously you should have pretended like this wasn't here before. Um, so we need to grab these fluid pipes and start piping it up from here. So I do have a general idea of how I want to do this because I already mapped it out. But one thing you got to keep in mind is if you're going to keep these pipes really close to each other, you're going to have to make sure they don't actually link up because this one right here is plant oil and that is not what we want going into this machine. So we have to disconnect them. You can do that with the engineer's hammer, just clicking on the links. So you can see it kind of forms like it outlines just the link itself and you can click on that and get rid of it. So we're going to wire it like this, or I don't, I shouldn't say wire. I should say we're going to pipe it like this. So we're going to pipe it like this and just put a block there and pipe it up here along the ground. And I'm going to fill in as we go with this stone. It's not really that important that I fill it in. Nothing could spawn down here anyway in a one by one spot, uh, you know, aside from like a slime spawning here, but it's not going to spawn there. So, you know, we don't have to worry. And then we're going to bring it right up over here and that should be good. We should be getting the biodiesel in here. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why is it not running? Well, that's because I really don't have any biodiesel down there. Um, it's also actually not hooked up down here, so that's the real reason it's not running. Um, if we look in here, though, there's like no biodiesel. But now you might be thinking to yourself, why is it not running? And the reason is because if you don't have anywhere for the power to go from this thing, it's not going to run, which is awesome. It's also if you know if you have um, a machine that's no longer burning power and the internal buffer is full or your capacitor is full and it's got nowhere to send it, it's not just going to aimlessly burn through your biodiesel, which is phenomenal. So you don't need to manually turn it off unless you just want to stop it uh, for some odd reason. But I was worried initially that I was going to hook this up and it would just start chugging through it uh, and just, you know, it would fill up the capacitor and then it would keep going and just waste all my energy but that's actually not the case so i was pretty happy but we need to hook up this high voltage capacitor and this one's actually full we can look at it in my inventory now so we don't have to use the voltometer later but it's full it's got four million rf in it and that is all from this i think i burned roughly 12 buckets in this thing uh, maybe a little bit less obviously because it's 4096 rf per tick so it, you know it probably got me a little bit more um but we can hook this thing up right here and it was really quick to fill it up so i was really excited when i saw that but we are going to be hooking this up and you can see it kind of like flicked on for a second when i hooked this thing up right here i don't actually have that much in here though in terms of biodiesel so we can hook this up and like i said the input to this uh, i talked about this a while ago but usually a good indication of whether it's an input or an output is going to be orange only is going to be an output and uh, blue and orange will be an input so uh, that's just one thing to keep in mind. I hooked this up to the input, but we can't really input anything in here right now because it is, of course, full. So this is actually pretty much the setup. It's complete. It's not a super difficult setup to do. Now, keep in mind, that this is just setting up this. Everything else probably took like three or four times as long to set up and was probably more fun to set up too. But uh, this was relatively easy to do. So I thought it was going to be a lot worse when I first started this out, but uh, the only thing that was bad about it was getting the steel, but you guys know I always complain about getting steel, so we're going to have to automate a steel production thing later because I cannot deal with constantly doing this. So now, we're going to be talking about what we're going to do with the power. So if you do decide to use the high voltage cables, which I would suggest that you use, they're the best at transferring power, so why would you not want to use them? You got the best power generation, you might as well get the best power transportation too. But uh, there is a little bit of a difference between transporting... Uh, using high voltage cables and medium and low voltage cables. Of course, there's the difference in the amount of power that they can transfer uh, per tick, but there's also the difference when you're looking at like medium voltage, all you need is the medium voltage wire connector. Low voltage, same thing, uh, just the low voltage wire connector. But when you come to high voltage, you can see you got this weird green thing over here, high voltage wire relay, and it looks very similar to a wire connector. 
Now, wire connectors will always be used for power input and power output like we have right here. So imagine this is what we want to get the power to, whether it's a capacitor, an excavator, whatever. It's right here, and you're going to hook up one of the uh, connectors to that. You're going to hook up a connector right here to whatever's outputting the power. And then right here, if you ever need to connect anything in between here, so if we come upstairs, I'll use this as a good example, because uh, obviously we do have this going on in our base. So right here, you can see that we have all of these connecting to the ceiling and then running to where they need to input. So you got the input right here, you have the output right here, and then you just have like a middleman sort of block right here. You can't do that with the high voltage connectors. You need to use relays for that. I don't know why they did that. Maybe it's just because transporting high voltage over a very long distance should take that. But right here, this if this was high voltage, this would need to use the relay. And another thing to keep in mind is relays have to be upside down. You can't put them on the wall like we have this over here. They need to be upside down. So keep that in mind if you're just trying to think of a way to decorate or you want it to look cool. Uh, you need to use those. They're really cheap to do. They're going to take some insulated glass and some iron ingots for eight of them. And the high voltage wire coil should be able to go up to 32 blocks instead of the 16 that the other ones can go. So you can transport it a really long distance without having to use too much of that. But eventually we will have to use that. And if you are going to be transporting it, of course, uh, you're going to have to use that. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be showing an example of that today, but hopefully the kind of rough example I gave up there is good enough to let you guys know what's going on with it. So all of that is done. So if you guys were just coming here to, you know, get some information on that, you know, all of this is done. Now what I'm going to be talking about is uh, pretty much all the farm stuff we have going on here. Hopefully you could hear, well, you know, it's not really hopefully, but um, you could probably hear, unfortunately, you could probably hear these pistons repeatedly just firing and firing and firing uh, whenever anything grows. And, you know, obviously that's a good thing. It means everything's working, stuff is growing. That's great. We're getting, you know, biodiesel. It's all good. But uh, it's also really loud and annoying. And it's just going to get worse because, as I've mentioned previously, and as you guys have pointed out, uh, you're going to, if you want to generate enough biodiesel to actually have this consistently running to power the excavator, uh, you need to be generating, like I said earlier, one bucket or 1,000 millibuckets of biodiesel every 6.25 seconds. If you're wondering where I got that number from, flip over two more pages, you can see it says biodiesel burns for 6.25 seconds at 4096 RF per tick, and that's 125 ticks. It's really irrelevant, you just kind of need like a sense of how long, so 6.25 seconds, 125 ticks, whatever. Whatever you want to call it, that is how long we have to get one full bucket of biodiesel. So we need a ton of these farms going. And the more we add on, the more constant uh, the piston firing is going to be, the more annoying it's going to be. And along with that, once this thing starts running, it gets really, really loud. Now, if I were to come all the way, maybe like, it's not really all the way over here, but if we were to come over here, you actually wouldn't be able to hear it. These blocks or these multi-block structures are relatively good with having the sound drop off quickly. So you can probably put them in your base and not worry about it being really annoying. But the pistons are not the same way. These things I hear wherever I am in my base, it's super annoying. And so I'm thinking about making the like a different building just for these. Maybe this entire setup I might put in a different building, but uh, we're gonna need a lot of these farms. Like when I say a lot, I mean a lot. So take whatever you're thinking of right now in your head, multiply that by two, and then it's even more than that because right now we're not getting enough at, like we're not remotely close to having enough biodiesel. Um, and adding more, it'll help, but I don't actually know if we'll ever be able to consistently run this diesel generator. Uh, usually when people play this mod, they have it in a pack. And so they have better things to automate these, make bigger farms, all that good stuff. I don't have that. So right now we're gonna have to rely on, uh, you know, using bud switch pistons to automatically harvest this stuff and hope that we can get enough of it going that it's it's gonna be able to generate enough biodiesel. So in the near future, we will be working on that and I do have some cool plans to use. Uh, if you guys don't know, there's actually a cool thing called the engineer skyhook and it just says in the description, a new form of travel. Uh, you can use that with like, I think it's steel cables to move long distances so I kind of want to use that and create like a transportation system from this like portion of the base to you know another place that has these generating um, biodiesel or maybe even the power from the diesel generator all that stuff and eventually I want to have a bunch of different places we can go to that'll have all the different things or processing all that stuff is con like it's in this base right now eventually I want to move it to its own base and kind of separate things 
but this will probably be the first thing because we need more of these farms. So I've been rambling a really, really long time about how these farms are pretty much not nearly good enough. Um, but I just wanted to say thanks for watching the video, guys. I'm sorry it's on the shorter side, but uh, you know we've been working on this whole setup for probably like four or five episodes now. So you know it's been a long time in the works. So all those episodes shorter, do not get any misconceptions about setting this thing up. It does take a lot. So if you're watching this right now, you should probably go back and watch the other four or five episodes prepping for this so that you know what's going on here and you have a general idea of what it's actually going to take. But again, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful in any way, feel free to give it a like. It really helps me out a lot. And as always, keep it up with the feedback. You guys have been amazing helping me out with this series, giving great feedback. You guys really, really seem to enjoy it, which is why I really feel compelled to record it and I'm having fun with it. Um, one other thing that I want to say, uh, obviously, Happy New Year, but that is the main reason why I didn't upload a video yesterday. I've been trying my best while I'm on break to put a video up every single day. And obviously, it was New Year's. It's obviously it's the second one this is going up, so it's New Year's Day the day before. But the day before that, it was New Year's Eve, so I didn't have time to prep or record a video before my friends came over. They stayed the night. We you know fell asleep at seven in the morning and woke up and I was super groggy, so I slept in and did all that stuff. So I I'm not feeling my best today, but I you know I didn't want to miss two days in a row, so I wanted to get the video out. So sorry if it was a little bit like not as great as all the other ones or as energetic or anything, but that is why, and that is also why I missed a day of uploading. But I'm going to stop rambling now. I'm going to let you guys go. So thanks for watching again, and I will talk to you guys later.